appreciate the opportunity to be in front of in front of you all here today. We've had the pleasure of working with uh, Crystal and uh, worked on some pro projects here. So, gonna just kind of run through them in a very brief fashion and see if you have any questions about it. All right. Don't forget to introduce yourself. I am. I will do that. Um, with me here today, my name is Gary Johnson. I'm a principal in charge with Timmins Group, and I lead our actual bridge design group. Uh, Brian, Brian Wright, you will hear from in a little bit, uh, is in our bridge design group, and Thomas Ruff is in our traffic design group. So we're all just gonna share a little bit about what we've been up to the last few months. So what we're gonna talk about first is, uh, is the uh, 220 road safety audit. Uh, following with that is the TAP applications for some improvements along Route 2 220. Uh, the Rayon Bridge, the funding for that, as well as the schedule for its replacement. Um, some bridge safety inspections all around the city. Um, we are also looked at an inventory of all of your, your uh, bridges and culverts. And then the uh, EDC business plan is what we're gonna end up with. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Thomas. Oh, a little bit, just a little bit about us, just so you know what, who Timmons Group is. Uh, we are a Virginia-based uh, multi-engineering design firm. Uh, we've been in business for about 68 years. We have 325 people in Virginia and about 700 in the firm as a whole. And uh, we really do appreciate the opportunity to uh, serve the city on, on these projects. So, Thomas. All right, thank you, Gary. Thanks for having us as well. We do appreciate the opportunity and uh, again, I, I'm gonna say this a lot as I really enjoy my job, so this is a fun project for, for me to try to help out the city and help out our client here to, to really look at the safety of Route 220. You guys know this route well. We looked at all three miles within the city limits, starting down near Coochies of the South, uh, all the way up north to past the West Rock plant. So we kind of covered that all. Uh, what goes into a road safety audit is that you're required to follow a few protocol from VDOT to, to ch check out, kind of make a field visit, check out all of the safety items that you see in the field, and then beyond that, take a look at uh, kind of the, the crash history of the area. So I've got a few photos that we took, um, and we did, we did walk our way through the entire corridor, videoing, taking photos, making sure we understood everything on the corridor, as well as everything coming in and out. Um, You'll see, and, and um, I know these photos, uh, you, you all have seen this before. I'm not, I know I'm not speaking to, you know, you've all, you all understand uh, some of the challenges that come along the Drop 220 corridor. Um, the major ones uh, were site distance issues, uh, whether that was from vegetation, grading, uh, retaining walls and things like that, lack of maintenance uh, or, or overgrowth in other areas. Uh, a number of signage issues and pavement marking issues with conflicting information and uh, items where pedestrians and vehicles don't have the right information to make a decision. And lastly, some other pedestrian items in the bottom left corner, you'll see kind of just a, a what, where a pedestrian would enter the roadway, a curb ramp. Um, so looking at a number of those items. So it wasn't just what, how are the cars feeling, how is their safety, it was bikes, pedestrians, uh, and, and cars, so all users of the Route 220 corridor. Um, in total, we, we had about 31 different items that we came across. I'm not gonna walk you through all those, um, but I do wanna just touch on some of the high level crash analysis. Um, we looked at everything, we looked very holistic, so I've got a few slides on this. One of the big ones, and I've, and I've highlighted where the crashes that we noted over the last five years were in relation to the state, as well as to this kind of local district area. And you'll see is that rear ends were very high. So that tends to happen on roadways that have uh, lanes that drop. So it, maybe if you, if you know where Route 18, the signal there, if you're coming northbound, uh, the lane, there's a left turn lane drop. We had that issue while we were driving in. Um, but it's, it's a common, you know, lane drops, locations where people don't have sight distance, they end up, uh, they, can, they make a quick stop so the car behind them isn't ready for it. Um, and so you'll see that that's a, that's a significant outlier in the number type of crashes that are occurring. Um, and a couple other items, you know, things that you probably are aware of is there, there was a statistically significant higher amount of truck crashes along Route 220. Um, so we you know, made note of that to keep track of for the future. Um, so that's, these are just kind of, I'm not going to go through all these statistics, but it's something we took part in our report to make sure that you guys could see. Um, and the next two maps here are just quick hotspot maps to give you a highlight of where 
some of the next recommendations and where a lot of the focus of our report went to is we looked at overall all of the injury crashes along the corridor and um, you know Carrollton Drive at the very southern end the signalized intersection there had the, the most crashes of any intersection along the corridor and up from there uh, Cherry Street the Klein Main Hickory uh, intersection and curve was was up there and then Riverside Street where the West Rock main entrance is so I think hopefully I'm not saying you know things that you all maybe don't know from from driving the corridor but again that's the point is to document this so we know the next step to take in fixing those issues um, now pro injury crashes is one part but there are many more property damage crashes that occur and so again it's it's always interesting to see if there's any different changes there's a slight change in here um, that carpenter drive route route 18 intersection does pop up as another major intersection so we've got some uh, improvement options for the, that location as well. So um, now th that that was that's a quick quick overview, and I know uh, you know if you have any other questions, we absolutely are gonna would love to get into that. And I know Crystal has the report, so we you know if there's another point where you guys want to get into, we can we can definitely do that. Um, but uh, what we'll move on to now is a couple of TAP applications. That's transportation alternatives program. Um, VDOT requires a road safety audit prior to making a submission for the, the transportation alternatives program. So you have to, <laughs> so it gives you the opportunity to review that safety, document it, so then your improvement, your project can fix that. So the first one we looked at was a sidewalk project along Route 220 from Pine Street to Beach Street. Um, it could be broken up into two pieces either you know, Pine to Cherry and Cherry to Beach, but we recommended the full amount, mainly because this location uh, has an older, you, you already own the right of way, and there's an older brick sidewalk along that alignment that would do well to be improved to current standards. So right of way is obviously is a major cost in, in any transportation project, so that was a, a key point here. We know there are a number of pedestrian fatalities and injury crashes along this corridor, and obviously, this is the one section of Route 220 where there are a lot of homes and businesses on the north side of 220. In the remainder of the area, it's you know usually one one strip, and then uh, this is kind of the section where you'll actually have a buildup of traffic, pedestrian traffic on that side. So we want to get find a good way to safely get those folks across Route 220 uh, at a couple different key areas. The next improvement that we recommended, this is at the McAllister Presbyterian Church, uh, also where the food pantry is. So if you're familiar with this intersection with Cedar, um, there's a pretty big retaining wall on that uh, northeast corner that blocks the view of, of, uh, for cars and pedestrians trying to cross the street. You've got the parking lot, that's the main parking lot for the church and the food bank over there. Um, so we wanted to try to take a look at this to improve that shorten the crossing distance make it uh, a straighter alignment as well as you know include some bump outs there remove some parking so that you see the pedestrian when they are in the street um, and so that was a that, that was a little bit smaller project but again to address some of the crashes that are occurring at this intersection and so finally the last project i'll talk to is the last one we did for tap which was at Highland Avenue. Um, you'll see there, we, currently if you're coming from downtown and you're trying to travel as a pedestrian across further to the south along 220, there really is no uh, sidewalk connection in that direction. And so we have proposed to close that access all the way around the access that goes back uh, to the, the street, uh, I think it's, uh, Tower, uh, Water Street or Tower Street, uh, but the uh, close that access and provide a better sidewalk connection system as well as adding access management to the corridor. And so that's important in reducing the number of people that stop to make a turn in the middle of the street. The more entrances the hat you have, the more likely you are to stop and make a turn. So that's that was kind of our final project. And again, these are all focused pedestrian. 100%. So that was the goal of the TAP program from VDOT, is pedestrian only. And as a part of our project, we also came up with a list of other ideas. Um, there are many of them, and I, again, I don't want to, you know, 
you all can, can peruse those at your own time. But the, the top ones that I wanted to look at were areas where I think the, the, the city could improve both your, your safety and your, your bike and pedestrian activity. So one was looking at a road diet uh, along Route 220 from Riverside Drive to the Jackson, Trail, River, Jackson River Trailhead. Um, the intersection of Carpenter Drive and Route 18, there's a major side street there, an access road that has connection to 220. There's a lot of asphalt there, there are a lot of accidents there as a result of that extra asphalt. So we came up with a plan for there as well. Um, in terms of some other small safety items, um, one of the big ones we felt was looking at maybe potentially a one-way street conversion for Hickory, Klein, and Main, uh, pairing them up as one-way streets. Uh, there, the sight distance there is not great. The curve and the curvature in Route 220 adds to safety issues. So trying to find a way to get folks to the intersection and away safely in a way that doesn't hopefully cut, cut people's access off. And um, the last few items, again, are, are smaller items. But again, the more small items that you take care of, you know, over time, that does, that, that improves the safety. So uh, looking at your traffic signal timings, uh, small pieces for increasing yellow and reds, which allow people to have more time to make a decision, and you can reduce your, your rear ends with that information. Um, pavement marking, signage, and vegetation overgrowth. Um, those are items, I think, that are small, but the better you take care of that, the, the you get the bang for your buck. It's a small amount to, to do that work, but at the end of the day, you, you increase everyone's visibility, and, and that's, that's gonna increase your safety for, for every user of Route 220. Um, so with that, um, I think we'll, we're going to hold questions, I think, to the end, and we'll turn it over to Brian for the uh, structural side. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Thomas. Um, I'll just go ahead and reiterate what Thomas and Gary have both said. Uh, we're happy to be here. Thanks for having us. Um, we've enjoyed our time working with the city of Covington so far and are happy to kind of show what we've been doing. Um, so as Gary mentioned, uh, I'm a project manager in our structures group at Simmons Group. Uh, I've been working on a few things here uh, in Covington, mainly Rayon, uh, the Rayon bridge replacement, and some of y'all's bridge inspections. Um, so we'll start with Rayon. Um, we've been working with Crystal and the city um, to obtain funding through State of Good Repair program uh, with Virginia Department of Transportation for the Rayon bridge replacement. Uh, Great news, in June of this year, the Commonwealth Transportation Board approved the funding for that bridge replacement project. Um, as you can see on the screen here, the total estimate for that job is just over $14 million. Um, and that includes uh, $12.8 million in construction fees, and the rest of it being in engineering and right-of-way costs. For the schedule, um, this is what VDOT kind of preliminary laid out uh, in the pre-scoping phase. Um, I'm just kind of showing it here for information. Uh, PE is gonna be starting pretty much right now. We are working with VDOT to get the preliminary engineering efforts underway as we speak. Um, we know that uh, everybody wants to get that going uh, quickly. Um, construction start is right now called for fall of 2024, but um, all of this will be updated as we kind of get into the preliminary engineering efforts more, discover kind of what is the scope of everything we need to do. Um, and can build a better timeline. Uh, but just kind of wanted to show that as a starting point. And you can see uh, kind of a, a preliminary rendering we developed of the new bridge crossing location, kind of showing how it ties in both on the north and south side. Uh, one of the other things I've been working on here uh, in, with Covington is y'all's bridge inspection and cohort inspection program. So I've been out on the side of the road a few days um, looking at some bridges. Um, we've inspected so far two bridges, uh, South Carpenter Drive over Jackson River and South Carpenter over the CSX Railroad. Um, we were able to get snoopers out there. Snoopers are uh, trucks that can access the underside of the bridge. Helps us get a little closer look at the bearings, the condition of the girders, um, and top of the piers. Um, I believe both those bridges hadn't been accessed that way before, so we are able to get kind of a better view and better understanding of their condition. Um, you can kind of see the truck we use in the picture there on the right um, to get underneath there. Um, both of those bridges that we inspected are in, I would say, given their age, a very good condition. Um, South Carpenter River CSX is in great shape. Um, it actually does not have any joints, expansion joints over the piers, uh, which in the bridge world, expansion joints are our number one cause of deterioration. Um, that bridge is holding up very well. 
South Carpenter Drive of the Jackson River. It's holding up very nicely as well. Um, that bridge does have some expansion joints on the deck that are allowing water to come down and you're starting to see some corrosion um, along the bearing lines, but nothing at all that is remotely of a concern right now and can't be addressed with some um, kind of uh, forward-thinking maintenance, cons maintenance considerations. Uh, we've also inspected three of your culverts in the city, um, two along South Carpenter Drive and one on North Allegheny. Um, again, all are in great shape. Um, you can see us and two of, uh, two of our other inspectors hanging out in one of the culverts there in the bottom left. Um, but everything so far that we've seen is in good shape. Um, and ultimately, we will produce the biennial safety inspection reports for the city's records and for VDOT. Um, and one of the things that comes with those reports is a list of recommendations for future repairs to help make sure your bridges stay in good condition and don't deteriorate um, quicker than they need to. So along with that, we're also taking a look at every bridge inspection report that the City of Covington has right now and combining a database of all the recommended repairs and all of those inspection reports. And we're classifying those recommendations under three different categories, which we call priority one, two, and three. Um, priority one repairs are things that we feel should be done sometime in three months or less. Those are very high, high priority items, critical items to get taken care of. Um, fortunately for the city, uh, we have not seen, I think, hardly any of those on your bridges and nothing that is of a high concern level. Um, priority two items are items that we think should be taken care of within about a year or so. Um, those are items that we think can be knocked out for a relatively reasonable fee, um, are just going to be a great cost benefit down the road, stuff that can be, can be done fairly easily or are slightly more higher importance. And then priority three items are items that can be done 12 months or more down the road. So things that you should be planning for, things that if you have the budget would be great to do, um, but certainly aren't something that you absolutely have to do right now. Um, and what this is going to do is this is going to help um, the city plan down the road with the, the budget they have, uh, how to maintain their bridges, how to best plan for their future uh, condition, um, and make sure you guys have a bridge inventory that requires get, you get the most cost benefit out of your bridge inventory and you're not having to spend too much down the road on costly repairs. Um, like I said before, joints are kind of a big thing, so you're going to see a lot of joint replacement recommendations and things like that probably coming out of this study. Um, and we are currently underway on that study and it will be wrapped up sometime here in the next week or two. Um, and this is kind of, I know this is a lot, I know you can't read this slide, but this is more or less kind of what we are developing as an inventory, inventory system. And it's just going to be a spreadsheet with all your bridges listed and broken down into uh, what are the recommendations, um, are they a priority one, two, or three? Uh, a rough estimate on what those re recommend recommended repairs would cost and also kind of break down which we think could be done by um, city forces and which needs to be contracted out as part of a greater um, contract effort. Um, and then, um, like I said, we also have costs associated with all that that can then kind of be tallied out down at the bottom and then that's something Crystal and you all could use to filter out, you know, if we wanted to replace all the joints on every bridge we have, how much would that cost roughly? If we wanted to only do it on these three bridges, how much would that cost? So we think it's a really effective tool to kind of help you guys plan for the future maintenance of your bridges and come up with really cost-effective solutions. Um, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to Gary to talk about some of y'all's economic development plans. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. And just wrapping up here, just want to touch on a few things that we've been doing with the EDC. And uh, there was a, a business plan that was pull, pulled together and it has some recommendations. Uh, sell the Clifton Forge business park, uh, look for a new greenfield, uh, control of uh, ROR and slab site for more of a combined vision. And then the one that we're looking at moving forward with is design and construct a pad site at Commerce Center. Uh, and looking at that a little bit deeper, that is where we're looking, uh, doing full service engineering and design services looking to move dirt this spring, coming up spring. Uh, 35 acres of uh, pad area ready for future development. Um, something in, in the realm of 500,000 square feet to 700,000 square foot building. Uh, and that's to create a tier four pad site that's ready to go for a new employer. So uh, that's the other work that we're doing. And um, with that, uh, we do appreciate our time. And I don't know if you want us to take questions now or you want to hold them back, whichever way you'd like to go. Council, you have any questions? Uh, on the uh, Carpenter Drive Bridge at uh, Jackson River, 
over the last several years on inspections, the uh, expansion joints have been noted as need replaced. Yes. In the past, I've seen expansion joints replaced with concrete instead of rubber. Is that an option on that bridge? Uh, I would have to look at the specifics of that one, and Brian, if you want to chime in here, um, there is a, joints are there for movement, to take movement with temperature, and, and bridges do move. There are details where you can actually close them up, and actually you can do a joint closure. There has to be a certain types of components of bridges where that can be done. Um, if that can be done, it's a little bit more expensive than just replacing the joint, but you do it once, and then you stop the water from coming down. Uh, the other thing is instead of putting back a, a rubber seal